Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Valakar Alavane, back for some more Dungeons and Dragons Online. Alright, so for this quest here, it brings us back into House Viarlin. Now it is kind of towards the entrance to Necropolis, as well as right near the House P teleporter. You want to just head up by this caravan right here, and we're going to talk to, um, I don't even want to pronounce his name, uh, Erifanus da Viarlin. And he's going to give us a quest, Spawn a Whisper Doom. Now, entrance is the giant caravan. The first part here is uh, kind of one of those entrance quests. There's no actual difficulty setting to it. Um, so it does only allow you to step in on normal. And essentially, it's just getting to the quest. Now, if you are a ranged type character, right from the entrance, you actually are able to uh, kill enough are just about enough enemies rather to uh, be able to get that full bonus before you even uh, before you even move all right so as you can see 600x or 530 it's not bad five well 540 but i guess i gotta learn how to do numbers it's not terrible for the amount of time that it actually takes you to get them um and then your quest is just right here so just right from where you step in essentially walk straight and here you come into whisper doom's lair uh now for those who ran tangled root you might actually remember whisper doom as an enemy in there um, almost a nigh unkillable enemy in the Tangle Root quest chain. Uh, that's because they have this part here, which doesn't actually have an affiliation to the quest chain, other than the fact that it is Whisper Doom, which is the giant spider. Alright, so the first thing that you need to do once you enter, um, as you see, we can't quite go through this barrier, and that we have. S oh. We are getting attacked right away. Um, that there are seven barrier locks. Now each one of these are tied to a specific enemy. So we do need to kill all seven in order to continue through. So we are going to have to head east in order to do so. Now the quest itself, the XP isn't terrible, um, about 15,000, but it does take a little bit more time, uh, but there are a couple of little extras in here. Alright, so the first part here, we're going to head uh, south through our door, and we're going to come across our first guy, and that would be the Ogre Magi right there. They are the ones that we need to kill in order to open up that main barrier and be able to continue progressing through the quest. Okay. And if you're like me and hate Ogre Magi, all the power to you. You also notice a small trap towards the doors. Uh, they do that on a couple of these doors. I'm, I do believe they're not a hundred percent chance spawning, so just uh, take your time and check to make sure. Um, it's definitely better safe than sorry. And right here should be another, another little nasty trap. 
So for this one, just jump up and over. Easy peasy. You're also going to find a good majority of the breakables in this section. So if you are wanting to grab your full breakable bonus, definitely make sure that you are grabbing them all as you are progressing through. Alright, so here, as you'll notice, we do have a split. Now, if we continue heading uh, east, we'll just run into a set of shrines. Nothing more. Now, south is the direction that we need to go, though I do want to warn you that there can be a nasty blade trap in here. Um, and I know it's got myself a few times. It looks like we lucked out. Um, I still don't want to be too cavalier. Nope, seems like we uh, lucked out. So as you see, just from doing this, the village section, we did get 62 of the breakables, giving us a vandal. Um, so obviously, as you can tell, without it, it, it is very hard to get conquest um, if you don't uh, stop to get all these ones here. All right, once you proceed to the end and get the silver key, we are able to backtrack a little bit and then we will head down the other path. Now, if you are with a group of people, I do recommend splitting up the party, uh, having a couple head down this path to the village, the other one making the turn here, heading north, and clearing that section there. Both of which are approximately the same length. So it definitely helps speed things along there. Alright, so here we are, we gotta say the seven Carthal Enchanters, uh, and these are the guys that are gonna have the, ultimately the barrier, so that's these guys here. We'll also have a few of Whisperdoom's daughters, that we also will need to kill. Uh, as you can see, they do a decent amount of acid damage, so having some acid resistance while facing them is definitely a perk. The and assault, uh, essentially you just need to make sure that you hit up all the passageways on this side in order to just ensure that you are getting all these enchanters.
All right, so as you can see, lots of spiders, lots of annoyance. Though once we get to a certain point in this quest, it will become a little bit more difficult as we're actually gonna have the big bad boss spider coming after us. Along the path, you're also going to run into several of these just random spawns. Uh, they're just a standard mob, but there is an option for killing a total of 50 of them. So it is your choice whether or not you choose to fight or run past. Or ransack, rather. The hatchery. Of course, it disappeared. Alright, so now that uh, the daughters are defeated, as you notice we did uh, get that notification that the Whisper Doom is on the prowl. So at this point we do got to be a little careful that we don't run into her, as we still have a lot left that we can go through and do. I mean, you can't always kill her the moment you see her. But most times you want to try and get the most out of it that you possibly can. Killing the enchanters and all that like before. Now it is very, very unlikely that you'll meet her before you kill the enchanters and head on through. Got that section. The hatchery.
So like the very beginning, we have a second doorway here, um, which will have the exact same thing on it here. We'll have seven seals. Uh, as we are at six of seven, we have one left. So there it is now defeated. We can now pass through that barrier. And here we go. So this is where Whisper Doom will be somewhere throughout this area. The lair. Um, so as you notice, the lair. Skittering legs and clicking fangs echo in the darkness around you. As you're going about, you will come across some undead, for example. Shamble back through the corridor. Their bodies marked by separating spider bites. And when you find them there's actually a secret door right nearby them. Which we should find right here. The cave wall slides open to reveal the zombie's Inside, a little extra experience for yourself. And of course more additional kills. While you are exploring, just keep an eye out for that big old Whisper Doom, and it truthfully is super hard to miss. Though, that being said, I have had it sneak up on me. Uh, and the reason that you do want to just kind of keep an eye out for it is one, so you're not caught unaware, and two, so that you can try to get as many kills uh, and the like before you end up having to deal with her. Because obviously the more kills you get, the more experience you get. While you're also exploring, you will come across items like such as that battlement that is just over there. The Splinter Skull Battle Standard. Pick up. So it is kind of a little bit of a game of cat and mouse. As while you were out looking for her, she's also somewhere in the, the section prowling looking for you.
Uh, another couple thing is there will be a few chests out and about in this area as well, which can either be instantly opened or unlocked. Uh, this one here, as you see, does contain a silver goblet, which is another item like the battle standard, which will give you a little bit of extra experience as well. Once we complete, there's a little extra something we can do with them as well. Obviously, if you do have a party, splitting up would make it definitely a lot faster to find her. Uh, as well as finding all these little extras, such as this hidden door over here. Now, this hidden door is set to be actually the end chest. Oh, we got another item there. Uh, so this would be the end chest. As the spider herself, because she wanders doesn't actually have a fixed chest that she drops on death other than the one we just passed right there So if you had decided to uh, split up your party, uh, this path here would be the path that they would have been taking. From the entrance there. So here's that door that we passed right at the very beginning, and here's our hireling. So I'm and as you can see, the the, the map layer. of the area. We got a little bit left to go. Oh, and there she is there. So I'm actually going to just fight her right now. As you can see, she does have a fairly decent DR. And compared to a lot of the other enemies that you're fighting in this area, a fair amount of hit points as well. At this point, when she does track you down, it is kind of hard to lose her. But as you see, not too difficult to fight her. 21,000 in 22 minutes. Obviously, with a party splitting up and, you know, tracking her down, it does go quite a bit faster, as well as the kills go quite a bit faster there as well. And... That's actually about it for the, the traps and the secret bonuses there. Uh, now, there is a shrine located, I believe towards the center in here. I honestly, I forget where the, the shrine itself is located, but I know there is a shrine on this side here, inside the lair, so if you are looking for that, uh, I'm just gonna do a quick run and check. Kind of ignore the, the enemies there. As I do believe yeah, here it is. So if you are in need of a shrine, uh, there is one located here. Uh, again, there's also in the, the village there on the other side, way off in the safety. 
Now, once you are uh, have completed and you do recall out, obviously it is going to take you outside. So you can go ahead and turn in the quest right here. Now, with those additional items that we've picked up, the battle standard, the historical documents, and the silver goblet, we can actually talk to this individual right here. And we can turn them in for a little extra reward. And there you go. So it doesn't give you any additional experience, but it can give you a little extra reward. Um, now I know from personal experience, in the past, when turning in these quests, there was unique named items that you could get. Uh, however, it's been a long ten time since I have personally seen them even running this quest. So I can't say to the validity on whether or not those are still available. Um, but again, I know in the past, and when I say that I am talking, you know, four years ago, five years ago, um, there was named items out of this individual. Again, I can't say to the validity that there still is, as it's been well, four to five years since I've last seen any named items drop from this individual. All right. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it's been a blast as always. I look to see, see you guys again. Have a good one, all.